my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my floss tube channel. Today is Sunday, September the 18th and it is a, it's a, it's a pretty nice day. Um, I was laughing this morning as I was listening to the radio, they were like going, it's the last Sunday of summer. And we're having a pretty good day and I'm like going, it's like, eh, eh. I, I'd say we're heading into fall. Um, if the high today were in the 20s, I'd say it was a summer Sunday weather but it's not. So I'm calling it fall, even if we haven't hit the autumnal equinox. Yeah, fall is on its way, which means winter is on its way. Slurpee season, I fear, is over. Anyway, this is a channel about cross-stitching and the stitching that I've done over the past week. So if you are a new viewer, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. And if you are a returning viewer, as always, I truly do appreciate those of you who come back and comment and watch and, and all that kind of stuff. So thank you so much. There's lots of pieces of paper necessary for today. And I, I'm already telling you, I warned you last week, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a long... Uh, video so I laugh at people go buckle up I don't know that you need to buckle up I don't think you're gonna fall down but you know you might need a beverage and you know some settling in and as always don't forget it's not like you have to watch it all in one go you can get to a certain point and pause and continue on with your life and come back it'll it'll be here um so just wanted to touch on some of the comments from last week. Um, so thank you to those of you who commented how much you enjoy watching the videos. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it's I, I appreciate that that you that you value uh, the content that I'm putting out there. Um, as a reminder to people who are interested in the giveaways, the giveaway is running until next Sunday, um, Sunday September the 25th. I will do the drawing that morning. Um, if you are interested in what those giveaways are, you need to go back to the previous video, number 124, the one that's called It's Time, and watch for what the keywords are there at the very end. You have to comment on that video. If you comment on this video, you will not be entered. It will not, nothing will happen. <laughs> um, and by the time, well, we'll see how I do well on comments this week, but... Uh, yeah, so if you want to be entered to win, you have to comment on last week's video. All the instructions are at the tail end of that video. Upside, there's not a lot of comments on that video, so your chances of winning are pretty good. Far better than the lottery, let me tell you. Not, not everybody's going to win, but, you know, there's a lot less of you entered. So if you're inter interested in those two giveaways, comment on last week's video. All right. We're back on to, I'm talking about pocket mags again, um, <laughs> dear Stephanie. Um, she'd made a comment that, uh, you know, she had no problems with PNPS, but, you know, she can't remember exactly what the problem was that she had with pocket mags, but she had a problem. And so I'm back on the one last thing that I'm going to say on that one is, yes, with PNPS, they give you the option of downloading the entire magazine in one fell swoop as one PDF file. And then you can choose from that downloaded file what you want to print or, or save as a PDF to upload into Pattern Keeper or Markup RXP or whatever. Um, Pocket Mags is very, very clear. You cannot download the entire magazine as one file. You can only download it two pages at a time, which, don't get me wrong, is annoying as I'll get out. But my answer certainly for a lot of the ones that I've got, I would rather have the access than not have the magazine at all. So, uh, yeah. So, PNPS, you get to download the whole kit and caboodle as one file, which is great. That's not how pocket bags work. Let me know if you need any more help. Uh, Suzanne also commented that certainly in Word, um, you don't have to print to a PDF. You also have the option to export to a PDF. Um, so that's an option as well. Um, yeah, so for me, I just <laughs> I'm trying to get everything into a PDF so that then I can put it into Dropbox so that I can load it onto my tablet so that I can do things in Markup Bar XP. Anyway. Okay. Sorry. I need the pen because we're going to do these things in some certain orders. So I'm... OK, 
Okay, uh, Char commented. <laughs> uh, she might have had to stop the video so she could add some fabric to a cart. So uh, from the stash quisitions and the, the loner fabric that I had to show from dying for cross stitch. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's a great, it's a great collection of fabric. She does a great job. Um, thrilled with the pieces that I have. Um, I might be, you know, adding, I still have not pulled all those DMCs for that autumn piece that I found because I went in there and went, ooh, there's a lot of them. So there's like 50 colors. I still, I haven't handed them over. I'm not holding them hostage, but we, we haven't seen each other yet to hand them back. I will, I promise I'm giving the, her fabric back. Um, but I need to do that floss toss before I give it back. So I know whether I need that, um, I don't remember what it's called. Anyway, one that is unusually taupey for me that I might need for that fall piece. Anyway, so I might be adding to cart as well myself, but glad I could glad I could help. Okay. D made a comment comment that she is uh, keeping up with the sampler stitches Sal. She's trying to keep up with me. She's smart enough that she's letting me me forge the path ahead so that I can uh, let people know when there's pitfalls. So that's great. Um, <laughs> she's getting a little tired of the specialty stitches. I'm actually, I'm doing okay with them because I think it's because I just go, I do my one evening of stitching and then I put it away for the week and do one evening of stitching. It's, it's not annoying me yet. The cottages are starting to annoy me. I've got three more to go. The cottages are starting to annoy me. Anyway, um, but D, you also commented that you had also worked on the Just Nan uh, Remember 911 uh, chart. Um, you did it in 2003, so your timing is certainly much better than mine. Um, but uh, hey, if you've got any tips or comments on anything that you found in there where you're like, hmm, now it, 2003 is, I don't know. A while ago so it may not be fresh I totally get that but uh, if you if you have that moment going like I remember something you know maybe about halfway down I was like man I should have done XYZ something else uh, please throw those down in the comments down below because I I like those tips tricks hints you know watch out for comments that would be great um, and you'll get to see how far I progressed on that in a bit not too much more um, and then Gurley uh, had commented that she was, um, you know, going, she was hoping at some point she'd be able to work on it if she could figure out where to get it from. So a couple of comments. Now, she's in Norway. So, you know, it's not, it's not like it's in North America and I don't, you know, of course we're getting into international shipping territory yet again, which blah, blah, blah. If you're looking for the full set of charts, you can get the full set directly from the drawn thread website themselves. You can order all nine charts simultaneously. Um, if you're shipping to Norway, um, I'd recommend getting all of them, all nine at once, because otherwise nine ship international shipping charges is not going to be fun. Um, so there is that option, and I will put a link directly to where that is on the drawn thread web uh, page down in the notes section below. The other place is, I think it's Witchelt is the distributor for the drawn thread. So they do still show up on the Witchelt um, webpage as being something that you can order. Um, so if you've got, um, if you've got an LNS or an online needle workshop where you order from, um, if you reach out to them and see if they order direct, if they're ordering from Witchelt, whether or not they can, if they can add that onto you, onto their order for you. Um, the other one is now I don't know how many shops from um, overseas attend. Actually, I'm going. I'm, I'm. I've just heard that full sentence in my head, and I go, I don't think it's accurate. I don't think the drawn thread attends Nashville Needlework Market because I was going, that's the other option. If they were attending Nashville Needlework Market and you had a shop that was attending and could bring it back. But I don't know that there are a lot of them from overseas that um, fly into Nashville to attend that market. But there's a couple of options there. 
do do what works best for you secondary markets ebay you just never know somebody's de-stashing 27 other things um I didn't check before I recorded this, maybe 1884 Stitchery. It would still be international shipping, but she um, she gets a lot of um, sort of um, cross-stitch stash from estates or people who are downsizing and saying like, I can't, I'm not cross-stitching anymore, or here's all my stuff, or I can't see it anymore, here's all my stuff. Um, so 1884, I like I say, I didn't check on there, but um, they periodically have older charts that come into um, that they come into because they're getting the, those those stashes which have older stuff and uh, they're putting them on she's generally putting those types of charts on at very reasonable prices so you just never know it's another option all right Lynn also made a comment that she was asking me if I could show the back of my work and my answer is I can um before I start doing that, I just, it's a question for me going like, um, it's, what is it that you're wanting to see by looking at the back of my work? It's not that I have issues with how the back of my work looks, how the back of my work looks. I'm, I'm fine with it, but there is like, I just, there's all sorts of debate that goes out in the greater community about what your backs should and should not look like. I don't like play I don't like playing into that the answer is as long as the front is what you want that's great as my second one is is the front looks great and you haven't made the back um here's this is going to sound really bad a horrible ratted uh knotted mess that makes framing challenging like that's some of my concerns about certain things where you just you know um if there's a lot of knots and stuff like that on the back, it can make the framing harder, harder to make, get it, the framer to get it to look the way you want it. Um, anyway, so, um, and I know people post their backs regularly and all that kind of stuff. I'm not opposed to periodically showing it, I guess, just for my own interest. Um, is there something where you're like, I'd like to see the back because I want to see how you do, I don't know what. So... I don't know that it's ever going to become a regular thing for me, but if you can just throw another comment down on this video around sort of what, why, why you're wanting to look at the back, I can do it again. Periodically, I don't know that I'm going to do it all the time. Most importantly, the front has to look good. So, I was going to say, I know I, I within my, I, I tend to have fairly neat backs that are pretty good, and I certainly have, um, one relative she hasn't been cross stitching in in quite a few years and she all she always looks at the back of my pieces when she's seeing them unframed and goes <laughs> so <laughs> apparently they're they're not as nice as hers but i've i've never i've never seen a back of her work and i probably would never ask to see one of hers it's just it's not it's not necessarily something that I feel like I need to look at. But anyway, throw a comment down below. Um, I'll show the back of one thing today um, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Let's get into some stitching. Okay. For the 47th time. What did I work on? Forgot to haul out my clippies. All right, so last Sunday was my, was Sunday, uh, November the 11th, and I told my story that I was starting a new piece, which I've had in my stash for, I don't know, 20 years. Uh, so it is the um, Just Nan Remember 911 chart. Uh, Remember last week when I couldn't find the copyright? The copyright was 2002, so I did find that after the fact. Um, so here's what it's going to look like. Now again, I'm doing this as I'm stitching this on the 11th of every month until it gets finished. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not sort of hauling it out and working on it for multiple days in a row. Um, so 
there is that. It's going to take a while. You're going to see it periodically, once a month, until it gets done. Um, I am stitching this on a 28 count antique white Jobelin fabric. Um, I started it late on, on later on the 11th than I was expecting because I couldn't find my fabric and I was a hundred percent convinced that I had got it out of stash, I had cut it, I had searched it, I was ready to go but it was not in the bag. Anyway, it was not in the bag but I did find it. I had done all those things. How it didn't get into the bag is anybody's guess and it was underneath a couple of shirts on the ironing board. Anyway, started later than I wanted, but I did get it started. Now, it's tone on tone, as you can see. It's actually showing up not too bad. So there's my very, my very little start. Uh, I, I started in the middle of the top row because, you know, I have a whole thing about everything being proportionate and all that kind of stuff. So started in the middle of the top row. Again, this is the, the row of three pansy motifs which represent the three buildings that were destroyed in the 9-11 attack. Um, so I got it started. Um, I'm actually missing one color of Soie d'Alger, which I have on order. I think it might be in a traditional stitches and I just need to go pick it up. So I need to get my act together and, and go do that. Um, but it's interesting how it's, I would say it's showing up better on camera. This, this, motif is showing it better on camera than it does in real life. It's actually showing up darker than when I look at it. So for me, it's like, it's going to be very tone, very tone on tone. And again, that's one of the things about this compared to, you know, a lot of the commemorative uh, designs that came out um, about 9-11 is that it was just, it's a very subtle, it's a very subtle piece, which I appreciate. Anyway, so just got just got a little bit done. I have my magic calendar here. Uh, got 191 stitches into it, which is not a fantastic number of stitches, but not bad <laughs> given how much time I spent looking for my fabric. Anyway, so there is my start. This is, of course, going away until next month when it will come out again on the 11th. So there's that one. Yeah, there's stuff all over everywhere. It's anyway. A little bit concerned about the piles today. All right. So then um, because I had, um, I showed this last week, um, my um, reward for finishing the September Cottage of the Month was to work on another square on my Musical Christmas by Artistic Needle, a, an out of print chart. I'm doing this table runner. You saw that I was working on the trombone, which I'd only gotten a few stitches into. But I can now say, and of course this is where it gets hard, where you go, here's, here's side number one, so there's my drum which is now entirely complete because I did the back stitching, which you saw last week. And here is trombone number one. Here is drum number two and trombone number two as I'm working my way to the center. So four out of nine squares are now complete. So making progress, slow but steady. This is the one that you know, looking at a back. So here's the back of the trombone. Here's the back of the drum. All right. So that was my second piece, which I worked on. Uh, I worked on Monday. And since I've become I, I'm gonna, there's gonna be a section I think next year that's called Nerding with Numbers. Uh, so I put 289 stitches into the trombone to finish that off. So I got that finished on Monday. So then the next piece 
chaos, chaos, chaos. Okay, is uh, the sampler of stitches, which we just talked a little bit about, a series of nine charts by the Drawn Thread, which I'm doing as a stitch along hosted by Sarah the Stitching Mummy on YouTube. I'm just gonna say it again, I'm so grateful she started this cell. I'm like, this never would have made it into the five-year plan if it hadn't been for her. And so I'm forever grateful to her for starting this cell so I could jump up and down and go, me too, me too. This is the first cell that I'm actually actively participating in and keeping up with. So there's the nine charts. We are in the bottom row. We're on STU. My goal last week, so here's a closer look at STU, was to get the T finished, which was I needed to do the tree plus the letter T. Uh, this week, my goal is to get all of you completed. I think I might be able to get that done in one evening of stitching. Check back next month. Next month. Check back next week to see how I did. And here is how I... Ooh, Yep, stuff, stuff. Here's where I got to. So I successfully got uh, all of T completed. <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine. I said, the most ridiculous thing occurred to me while I was stitching on this on Tuesday. <laughs> so I was working on this tree, which is, I wanna say the thorn stitch. You know I don't know. That. I will have worked on all of these specialty stitches and by the end of the year I will know the names of mm, mostly none of them. Uh, the thorn stitch. Yes, that's what that's called. So I was working on this and as I was sort of, you know, I'd done about half, 50%, two-thirds of the way down, I was like, going, man, this is, this is so like a drawn thread. Then I went, Wow, are you stupid? It's not like a drawn thread. It is a drawn thread. <laughs> anyway, apparently this is the one where I go like, ooh, that's very drawn thready. Anyway, so I did that one. Actually, it was really nice. That, whoops. I got into that one and sort of really got into a rhythm of the stitches. So that was nice. That one went quite quickly. This has actually turned out to be a bigger stitch than I thought it was going to be. So T is now complete. I am one letter away from completing chart number seven of nine, which is great. So seven of nine, I feel like that's a Star Trek reference. Um, <laughs> I'll have chart seven of nine finished before we actually hit the end of September. So I think I'm doing really well on keeping up to date with my cell. I expect that hopefully this entire design will be finished by the end of the year. And I think I'm on track to be successful in achieving that goal. So the other thing that I spent my time on was that I was gonna come back for everything that was visible to add any charms or beads that I had not put in the time before. So I hauled out the charts and went, congratulations, that's two. <laughs> anyway. So I added the key charm. I used invisible thread to attach this. Um, in the cover for this particular one, they, they effectively attached it with um, thread that coordinated with the fabric that they stitched it on. I personally just chose to, um, I chose to do it with um, invisible thread also because I did one sort of one stitch over here which means it's not swinging so regardless of what happens in framing that key is going to stay straight I also got in the necklace here the called for for the necklace is the dark blue bead the fiber that holds these beads to form the necklace and I didn't like that um, in my head, I go, pearl necklace is the, in my head, I go, pearl necklace is in the intent of this, which of course made me think about the queen and the queen's necklace, pearl necklace that she wore all the time. Um, and trust me, there's no way it would have a dark blue, um, 
thread holding all that stuff together. So I made mine, I just used a white soie d'Alger, which was already sitting in the, in the floss weight bags for this. So um, that's what I used there. Very happy with that. Uh, so what do I have left to do? There's a charm for M, which is not available right now. And then there are some beads that go up here for the letter P. So again, it's not horribly, there, there's not a ton of charms and beads in this. So, you know, once I get to the end and I can roll up to the top half um, of this, yes, there will be some things that I need to attach, but nothing that is so dramatic that it's, I think it's going to take a lot of time. But I did laugh when I was like, okay, now I'm going to sit down and I'm going to get all those things added. And there's two. Anyway, so didn't take a lot of time and I got it all knocked out. So again, thrilled with how this is coming along. Seven of nine, we're getting close. All right. Yes, I'm trying to keep all the things organized. Okay, so what did I work on after that? So that was Tuesday. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, different project every day, which is a little unusual for me. Um, Monday didn't feel quite so weird because it was the one that I'd worked on Saturday. Anyway, so then what did I work on? Well, I worked on a whip that I've had for years and have not worked on in years. Years and years and years. This thing has been sitting in timeout for a variety of reasons. But it's coming back out now and you're going to get to see where I am. Some of you are going to laugh when we get to talking about it. That won't be a big surprise. So I hauled out my Chatelaine Designs whip. I am working on the Polar, I think it's Polar Beauty Mandala. There's a Polar Lights, which is not this one. I think it's Polar Beauty Mandala. It's the Mandala. It looks like this. Now, Actually, I'll show you. I'll show you what I did this week, and I'll talk a little bit about this, and then I'll tell you why this is occurring the way that it is. So I am working. Actually, so we're gonna get into this. I am working on this, starting in the center and working my way out, which is my which is my personal recommendation on how to approach shuttling designs. Start in the center and work your way out. Cer certainly on the large, certainly on the larger ones. Some of the some of the smaller ones it may not be quite so important, but on the larger ones, start in the center and work your way out. So I'm working on this uh, northern lights section. I will also tell you that in this chart there are two options for this centerpiece. There is, it's you can stitch it two over two for the whole thing. And there is also a version which is one over one for the whole thing. Anybody want to take a guess which version I chose to do? If you chose the harder one, that's me. Yes, I am choosing to do the center one over one. So I have this on my Omanic frame from, I think it's Estonia. Yes, you can't see me. Um, so here I am. Uh, part of my, so what did I, so what did I work on? So I got in just under 1100 stitches in this while I was working on this. So once, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I worked on this. So I've got in just almost 1100 stitches which is effectively this swoop. I really picked a color at which I thought I was going to work up, but it turned out it really worked down. And then I really made a decision to work my way up. So I have now reached the top of the one over one section here. 
This is the middle of the one over one section. So I probably like, like, I think it's, I did the calculation. I think it's, it's effectively going to end up being six by six is the center square. You know, why did I choose it? The one, the two over two is perfectly lovely. It's perfectly lovely. Um, not surprisingly, when you get into one over one, there's just, there's a little more detail, a little more shading. In the Facebook group, I saw um, versions, both two over two and the one over one. And I looked at them and I just went, I liked the look of one over one. And I chose to start this one because of the one over one. And I went, I need to do the one over one while my eyesight's holding up because you just never, as, as people age, you just never know what's going to happen with your eyesight. And yes, magnification is available. Anyway, 27 other things. So that's why, that's why this one ended up as high on the priority list to get stitched as it did is because that this center square, I have made the decision to do, um, one over one. Now I will say, so I started working on it and did this, you know, section down here. I will say in the intervening years since I've worked on this, because you haven't seen it at all the entire time that I've been doing floss tube. So I worked on it and then I put it away and it never got picked up until this week. So years it's been in timeout. Um, I will say that my one over one stitching has improved. So in hindsight, I'm actually really glad that I put it down. It's not that my one over one stitching wouldn't have improved if I'd worked on it in the interim, but in the intervening years, either my stitching style or whatever one over one stuff that I've worked on in between, my one over one stitching is much, much better. I'm much happier with how this looks compared to this. There's no way I'm ripping this out and restitching it. Not going to happen. But I think by the time I get the rest of the six, the fact that, you know, this was my beginner series and, you know, it's not my best one over one stitching, no one's going to pay attention. Um, so yeah, I've worked my way up to the top. My plan is to actually do sort of this quarter over here. I am not talking about what percentage complete I am of only of the center square. Forget the whole thing until I hit at least 25% because otherwise I'm going to be depressed because it's going to take to get the one over one. Um, I figured out a way to straddle my frame here. This block is almost 29,000 stitches. So this week I managed to get in 1100. So it's going to take a bit. Anyway, hopefully this is going to come up more regularly. As soon as I get this done, we are away to the we're away to the races. I think the rest of it will start to take shape reasonably quickly. It's I've just I've just got to get through the self-imposed one over one section here. We are going to talk a little bit more about this when we get to the topic. But there is my, there's my beginning of my polar mandala. Yeah. Put it over here on an angle so it can come out. And that's what I stitched on this week. <laughs> All right, let's talk about stashquisitions. Stashquisitions are also going to tie into my new start that I'm planning for tomorrow, uh, September the 19th, which is the day of Queen Elizabeth II's funeral, a state funeral, which I will be watching. I don't think I'm going to watch it real time. I talked to somebody this week that said, I'm sorry, I'm getting up at two o'clock so I can watch this. I don't know that I'm getting up at... I think it starts at, I think two o'clock is when the coverage starts. Three o'clock is when the funeral actually starts. I don't know that I want to be awake between two and three o'clock to watch it live. Um, anyway, um, I was looking at uh, sort of the, 
I just realized I forgot to bring something. Ah, anyway, and I've got no way to solve that. All right. Um, I appreciate the queen. The, the funeral is supposed to last for 55 minutes. And you know the royals, like they have their stuff timed down. So the funeral is supposed to take 55 minutes. So good, good for you, Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> We're going to keep it to the point. Anyway. All right. Stash acquisitions. Stash acquisition number one. Um, I saw this on an Instagram post uh, from the Craft Connection. Now, the Craft Connection I have visited. It's up in Edmonton. It is not local to me. If I shop from them, they have to mail things. Um, so they, they showed this post and I went, hmm, that looks really interesting. And I immediately went to see what my options were. I went to Amazon first. Not, not the most economical of options, believe it or not. Um, it is a 10 well palette, 10 well palette with lid. I got this from Michael's. It was sub $4. It was three dollars and something, less than four dollars. Um, I'll take it out of the bag. So crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. Here it comes. How does this apply to stitching? So here, so here's the lid. I'm going to take the lid off as well. But the lid is, you know, it's a reasonably sturdy lid. So I'm just holding it by sort of the outskirts of, of the lid. I don't know if I really, you know, did this a lot. Oop, see, there it goes. So it's not too bad. Not, you know, it's not going to handle a lot of jostling. But it's, you know, somewhat stable. And they showed this particularly in the context of Mill Hill Kits. And they were talking about, you know, when you get a Mill Hill kit, there's like a bajillion beads, right? A bajillion beads. And their post was talking about they sort of dump, you know, the big bag in here. And then it allows them to sort of, you know, then sort them into the 10 well palette. Now, I don't know, you know, it's not beyond, <laughs> beyond reasonability to go. There might be more than 10 colors in a given Mill Hill kit. Um, you know, I, I did buy two. I'm only showing you one, but I did get two just in case or, you know, whatever. But I was like going, yes, I could see using this sort of keep it here again. I don't know that even with the lid on that, if you tip it completely sideways, that the beads will stay intact in their wells. So I wouldn't advocate that. I haven't tried it, not, not planning on trying it. But I did go, I thought it was a really good option to do the sorting of them. Um, so I figured it was well worth the, you know, $8 that I spent to get two versions of this. Next time I haul out a Mill Hill kit, this is what I'm going to be using. So I thought it was a great idea from them. Again, I got mine from Michael's. I will put a link to this particular thing um, on the... Michael's Canada website, um, what it will allow you to do is if you're in the U.S., you can just take that description and put it into your Michael's U.S. and it should just pop right up. So this was in stock at my, at the closest Michael's to me. They had lots in stock, just went over there, you know, picked up my two palettes. All right, so the next thing, and this is where I realized I forgot to print out the chart or the picture from the chart when I was doing my printing for today. Oops. Um, so I bought a chart off of Etsy um, for my um, memorial piece that I am planning on starting tomorrow while I'm watching the funeral. I'm not even gonna insert, I'm, I'm going to put a link to it in the notes section down below. I really like it. Um, it is by Vivsters on Etsy. I will put a link directly to that chart um, in the notes section below so you can go right there and see it. Um, what it is, is um, it has the design of her coronation dress. Um, she did design it originally in celebration of the Platinum Jubilee. Um, and of course, 
you know, once the queen passed away, she sort of updated it to have um, her her date of, uh, well, on the, the Platinum Jubilee had the 2022 anyway. She updated it to have the date of birth as opposed to the date of her ascension to the throne. Anyway, so it just, it has Queen Elizabeth and the dates done in navy blue, 823, love it. Um, her cipher, the imperial, it's, I think it's designed, I think, as the imperial crown. I'm trying to decide if it's really the imperial crown or if it's the coronation crown, which are technically two different crowns, similar, but different. So I need to decide whether I'm going to make it the imperial crown or the coronation crown. Then her cipher and then the design from her coronation dress. Um, there were some suggestions that came in. So this is sort of some of the lagging comments that I haven't responded to. There were suggestions that came in from some of you as some options that you had seen. Um, the Primitive Hair actually just released, I think as part of um, Needlework Expo in August, a new chart that is was her um, Platinum Jubilee um, pattern, which has um, the silhouette of the queen, a, a younger queen. Um, and, I, and I've seen it, so, but thank you for the suggestions. My line is, I'm not sure I'm ready to stitch, like, the actual queen. Um, there are a number of people who are planning on stitching Teresa Gill. She's also on Etsy. She's got a picture of the queen in her coronation dress with the, um, the ermine robe. Um, that's the one that I have a, a picture of here printed out. So anyway, um, so this is the Teresa Gill one. This is not the one that I'm planning on stitching. Um, and I think it's lovely. I think the dress is lovely. I mean, it is what the dress was. The robe is fantastic. It's got the embroidery that, like, the, the this is the imperial crown for sure. Like, I love all of this. Um, the picture that I chose to print out is also the one that sort of highlights all the different emblems and what they are. Um, yeah, imperial, the imperial state crown from 1937. Anyway, um, because when she, as part of her coronation dress, she specifically wanted to have symbols from all of the countries of which she was the monarch. Um, so there are, you know, so there's, um, anyway, if you, if you, if you search for Teresa, I will put a link to this in, in the notes section down below so you can go straight to it. You can see it. Um, I printed it out for myself just because I like to remember what the things are. So not surprisingly, like, you know, the Scottish thistle, um, uh, a rose for England, um, a shamrock for Ireland. There's maple leaves in there for Canada. Um, the wattle flower for Australia, the leek for Wales, etc., etc. So anyway, I think it's really lovely. The thing that throws me off is the face. And don't get me wrong, it's hard to do faces and, you know, Queen Elizabeth is very specific anyway. So the face throws me off. If the face were, were better, I might stitch this, but it's throwing me off. Um, now, there is another option. Um, this is from STG, STG Stitch UK, which is the one where I got like the derby lady and the pink, the pink lilies, the, the derby lady, the Christmas lady, and the pink lilies. This is an option. Again, I think it's fantastic. So between these two, if I were going to stitch the queen, I think this is the one I would do rather than this one. I'm still at the point going, I'm not, I'm not necessarily, I, I don't, I don't know about stitching the queen. For some reason, my, I, my head is going, mm, 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 not so much. Anyway, so this is, um, yeah, the only thing that she's missing is because she's got the scepter is technically, um, there's an, an orb that's part of the coronation ceremony. Anyway, I'm fine with this as is, sort of, again, between the two, I think I would stitch the stitch, uh, the STG Stitch UK version, just because I think the face is better. 
this is a lot bigger than this one. I was also looking at this going, I fully expect that this is full coverage, just like the lilies. That if you get this, don't be surprised if all of this background is charted. So the answer to that we all know is don't stitch the background, pick the fabric color that you want and then just stitch the queen. Just, just a suggestion from me to you if you're, if this isn't, I will put a link to this um, in the notes section down below. There will be two versions of it. There will be a link to the PDF only version so you can kit it up yourself. There will also be a link because of course they usually sell these as kits. Um, so there will be a link to the kit as well. I don't know whether the, it's the kit is on Etsy or the kit is on their SGG Stitch UK website itself, but whichever it is, you'll find it in the notes section below if you're interested in that one. So just vibing off of the Teresa Gill one. So what, what my, my, my design has is it sort of has, you know, that design sort of working your way up, right? Because that's where the most of them are. So that's what I will be working on. My goal, um, my goal for the funeral is to stitch um, the Elizabeth II Regina, her cipher, which is done in metallic. That's what I want to stitch while I'm watching the funeral and then move to work on my um, beaded piece, the French country crown. So I will work on both of them, hopefully while I'm watching the coverage of the funeral. Um, and then I will be working on um, those pieces on the 6th of every month until they're finished, um, however long that takes. Um, so for, it chokes me that I forgot to print the one out for the one that I actually bought from Vivsters because it's really lovely. I'm Now I'm choosing to make things harder than it needs to be. Sorry, any, anybody heard that before from me? In fact, I've already said it once in this video. Um, so I'm choosing to make it harder than it needs to be. Um, sorry, the fact that you can see the shadow from the ring light, I'm just, I put the ring light up not because I needed it, but because I was afraid that depending on how the clouds were moving in that this wasn't gonna go well. So let me just solve that problem so I can feel better about it. All right, um, it calls for metallic. The call for metallic is DMC Light Effects E3821. And I went, mm, 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 nah, -uh, not doing that. So of course, what I do when I see that is I immediately go to the Fabi Riley uh, metallic conversion list that she's got. I will put a link to that in the notes section down below. I've downloaded that into into the conversion um, charts that I keep on my computer as part of my stitching. I've got a whole folder called conversions. It's in there. It's the Fabi Riley metallic thread conversion, which is great. Um, so I converted that to petite treasure braid, um, which is number, th so I'm using number three, PBO three. So this is used for the outer border and her cipher and the crowns on the side of the border design. So yes, I've, I've got bling going, like we knew that was going to happen. Now the crown that's on the chart, I was looking for um, sparkly beads that I could put in there to represent the larger stones in both the state crown or the coronation crown, whichever version I end up going with. Um, so I did make a trip to Michael's to look at their bead selection. I also made a trip out to the stitching corner to see what they had. Um, and what their suggestions were because they do more BB things than I do. They didn't have anything that was quite what I was looking for. And really their suggestion was use a Krynik. And I went, it could be a Krynik, could be a petite treasure braid. I don't know, we'll sort that out. Um, but the suggestion that they said that I was like, hmm, right? Like, so like some of the bigger stones are like, they're four cross stitches. And I thought they were very smart. And they said, don't do cross stitches do satin stitches just in a larger chunk with your metallic and they they were like I think that will end up looking more like what you want and sort of the beads that we've got and you've looked at none of them none of them are correct and you know they looked online for me for some of the options that they could order in because it's not like I'm going to finish you know my new one anytime soon um and we looked at them online together and it's like none of them are quite right so 
Um, so I haven't made final decisions on that. Again, my goal for starting it is just to get the cipher done in the petite treasure braid. And then I'm going to go back to the French country crown. I'm hoping to actually stitch the words to the queen while I'm watching the funeral. So I'm going to skip what was left of the crown and just skip down and just do the words to the queen. Um, I've also got to chart out um, the new dates that I'm planning on putting in there. So I need to work on that as well. So lots left to do on that. That's what I'm starting tomorrow on Monday uh, for my funeral watching. And I will be stitching it on the 6th of every month. There is a sal going. Um, I think the, the, the Instagram post that talked about it, they were stitching another design. It was a platinum Jubilee design, which is totally fine. I like the concept of, of just, um, so I'm hopefully going to post to Instagram. I know I've said that before and I'm terrible about posting on Instagram. Hopefully as I mark my journey through my memorial pieces for Queen Elizabeth, I will remember to post to Instagram and um, put them with the hashtag. Again, I don't remember the hashtag off the top of my head. I will put it in the notes section below along with all of the other links to these charts. So the other thing um, that while I was out at the stitching corner and I was looking at bead options. Um, so once I bought the chart, I did, a, I sat down and did a bunch of research into what the dress actually looked like. I, I hate to break this to you. I was not alive in 1952 <laughs> when the queen uh, was crowned. Um, in my head, I went coronated and I, my mother was yelling at me going, it's not a word. Sorry. When she was crowned, Anyway, um, you know, it was a very sparkly dress and uh, I found a fantastic article. Um, I think it was on the, the Royal Trust. Um, they had done an interview with Norman Hartnell, who was the designer of her coronation dress, who was also the designer of her wedding dress and sort of what those discussions had been. And it's got a lot of details about the colors. And it also had a really good close up of these motifs in the coronation dress because um, Queen Elizabeth signed off on what they look like before they were allowed to put them on the dress. So I've downloaded all the pictures. Turns out that the dress is very sparkly and very beady and all sorts of things. So in the Vivster's chart, I can tell you exactly how many beads there are in it. That number is zero. It's a lovely chart. Lovely, lovely, lovely. As I've said before, if anybody can take a fantastic chart that looks stunning and fabulous and make it infinitely harder than it needs to be, you know that person is me. So while I was at the stitching corner, I decided I needed more beads. I'm having a good chuckle because I'm looking at these. Wait till you see. I've bought two hanks of beads. This is the first hank of beads. Not surprisingly, the intention is for these to represent pearl beads on the dress. I'm really choked. I didn't remember to print off the one of the one that I got. Like, so all of this area in here, it looks quilty in this, in this, um, in this picture. On the real dress, all of those were done with pearls. Real pearls, I don't know about that. Pearl beads, I don't, anyway, they were all stitched with pearls. So on my design, I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to do it all in beads, which of course is the where I'm leaning towards, rightly or wrongly. Part of me goes like maybe just the center. So, you know, stitch the outlines of the diamonds and just do the centers in beads. Tune in later, I'll solve that problem. So that's that one. Then I got another Hank because, you know, why not? I will say these Hanks were ridiculously economical, like less than 350, a hank of beads. I got another batch of very sparkly beads to use in a variety of places. So again, I've been reading up on the design, um, 
the design of all of the motifs and like man this whew. so things like the the Canadian maple leaf now there is enough detail there is enough detail in the chart from Vivsters where I can do this if you look at the chart if you look at most of the charts the maple leaf is just sort of a goldy color which is fine sorry you've met me right if anybody can take a chart and make it more harder than it needs to be that's me so technically what happened is they had these diamond beads that they put to represent for the veins of the maple leaf and then they used green um, green uh, st surface stitching around that and then they used gold bullion stitches around that so it was actually a three colored leaf so in the Vipster's design there's enough there's enough detail in there that I can actually put sparkly beads for the veining and then I can change the chart to do the green and still have an outline of gold around it so yeah so I'm reading intently around what they what you know what the instructions were for what colors to use um, I would say in the Vipster's one I think she sort of updated the colors sort of like making they're tonally correct I think they're a little more vivid than they were in real life um, so I'm probably going to tone them down a little bit to be, you know, like the Rose of England. She was like, she just wanted it to be a very pale pink. The pink that they've chosen in the chart is, you know, uh, not the palest of pinks. So I'm probably going to change that. So it'll be interesting. I haven't changed, I haven't changed any of the colors yet. I just have in my head where I'm leaning. So I still have to pick my palette. It doesn't matter. Today's task is just get the fabric cut. I'm going to do it on a 32 count antique white Lugana. Um, I was originally going to do it on 32 count white. Why? Because when she had her initial discussion with Norman Hartnell about the dress, she said she wanted the dress to be white satin, the same material that was used for her wedding dress. So I was going to do it on white. I've decided just with the coloring, because there is going to be yellows and golds and 27 other things, I, I'm going to choose antique white just to give a little more, it'll, it'll mellow it down a little bit, and I think it'll help the colors blend together a little bit better. So I'm going to do a 32 count antique white Lugana for my stitching. I'm starting, of course, off with my PBO3. Tune in later. And again, I will only work on it during the funeral. And then as we go through the sixth, my goal is to get the French country, the French country crown stitch completed first. And then I will continue to move on this one. But yeah, two hanks of beads, part of stash quisitions. Um, I also got some bugle beads, got a couple of options. So this design on here that's shown sort of in here that's yellow it was actually pretty much all beaded. Am I planning on beading all of that? Uh, no. No, not so much. Am I planning on adding some beads into my design? Yes. And But in between sort of what you can see here, I know this is a lot of discussion, um, sort of like these borders, it was actually solidly beaded bead it all the way down in between them. Now I don't want to bead all of that because I'm already adding more beads than I probably need to. So my solution to that was to get some bugle beads. I got two different sizes, two different ways. I'm probably going to end up using these ones but we'll talk about that in just a second. So instead of beading all the way down I was just going to put bugles in. Not technically accurate but more beady, more closer to the beading level than than the design, the pattern I downloaded. These are the other ones I got. They're uh, slightly twisted. I think I'm gonna use these ones. Check back later, cause we're a long way from needing any of this stuff. But anyway, there's that. So that's my queen stitch, uh, which we're getting ready to start tomorrow while I watch the funeral. Um, those two pieces are probably going to be the only things that I stitch on on Monday because it is the funeral for Queen Elizabeth. 
All right. What else did I pick up while I was there? I had mentioned to you before that, you know, there's, I don't know whether the John James Petites are really going away or not, but I like the Petites. So um, they got a bunch, they were ordering some. I put my name down for a bunch of them. I'm only showing, showing you a couple of packages. I got more than this. I got several packages, um, both the size 26 and the size 28s just because I had a moment when all the discussion was going about whether they were being discontinued or not. I just went, uh, <laughs> I'm getting more. So I got a bunch of those. Um, then I also picked up, I almost made it out without picking this up. And then I was like, no, I'm going to get it anyway. So this is from uh, Stitchopolis. And to all a good night. I hadn't seen this. They had a stitched model uh, in the shop and I liked it. They did theirs on a 32 count opalescent white linen, which is easily made into a 32 count opalescent white Lugana. Um, I, lovely. There's some gold beads in here, etc., etc. The called for is a 32 opalescent white linen. Uh, so I've seen the model of this. That's what sold me on it. They also had one that said Marion Bright. And again, the bright is, is multicolored. And, but it was more red and, and yellow and orange. And so not, not quite my colors. Anyway, so this is the one that I picked up. I did a little looking last night to see how readily available this is. Now, it's not on the distributor websites that I could see. So if you're looking for this, um, you can order it from the Stitching Corner here in Cochrane, Alberta. They do ship. Um, so I will put a, they don't have an online uh, shop uh, for you to put your order in, um, but you can phone them. The two ladies that run it are lovely. So you can phone them if you are interested in getting this chart by Stitchopolis. They also had a freebie from Stitchopolis, which I picked up as well. They also had this stitched up as a model and it was lovely. Um, so if you're if you're ordering one of the Stitchopolises, whether it's Antoala Goodnight or the Marion Bright, which I haven't shown you, um, ask them if they can throw in the Stitchopolis freebie. Um, it's Let It Snow. And again, they stitched it on an opalescent fabric, three snowflake charms, they didn't have the charms in stock. Apparently, you know, as they put this out, people were picking up like nothing and, you know, running off and <laughs> took all of their snowflake charms. So I've got an order. I've got an order in with them so that I can get the snowflake charms. Um, the called uh, Mill Hill 15001 is the snowflake charms. Um, the called for threads are Weeks Tin Roof and Weeks Morris Blue. It was lovely, 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 lovely. So that was the, that's the freebie chart from Stitchopolis that I picked up. Those are my stash acquisitions that I'm going to show you this week. I technically got another order that I received, but this video is already going to be movie length. So we'll deal with those next week because I'll be back next week. Okay, let's get into the topic. Let's talk Chatelaine. Shot into the topic Chatelaine designs so I have a lot to say on this topic I have opinions um, but I will say um, I showed you my start on polar mandala um, that is not the only Chatelaine that I've ever worked on I have worked on a Chatelaine designs and finished it I have it here beside me <laughs> it's big so I'm going to hold it up and we'll see how I have to maneuver to even get it in. Um, I will be adding video to this that gives you a little bit of a close up of this particular design and, you know, my thoughts on as I was stitching it. But here comes the ginormous thingy. It's big. It's not. Okay, let's see. I know. Should I have practiced this before we got here? Probably. Yeah. 
There you go. Hold it up just a little bit. Go. Okay, that's going to end up being the screen grab. So as you can see, it's not subtle. This is a big one. Love the framing on this. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time talking about this because, like I say, there is going to be a video that's going to get inserted here about this. You're going to see this one in more detail. Um, I mostly followed the pattern. I used the called for threads. I'm just going to do a quick little pass by here. I can't even see what's going on, so I'm just going to pull it over and send it back. I have no idea what's going on. But yes, that's my Chatelaine design. So I am speaking from some experience. I have stitched one, completed it, everything. Um, I'm going to put that one down. All right. All righty. Now, there are other people. Let's get my pillow back down. <laughs> there are other people who have stitched a bajillion of these. Have I stitched a bajillion of these? No. Um, but I bought quite a few. So let's talk about Chatelaine Designs. got a whole bunch of notes here. Okay. So I'm going to start with, um, they have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful designs. They're stunning. They're amazing. Um, I remember when I first found Chatelaine Designs because somebody was talking in a group about wanting to get um, the White Knights of St. Petersburg. And I went, uh, I'm sorry, the what? I searched for it online and I found it and I fell down the rabbit hole and went. Now, I ended up, like, I like the concept of the White Knights of St. Petersburg. I don't love it, so I've never bought it. But that was where I first got, like, sorry, what Chatelaine's designed? What is this thing that they're talking about? And fell down the rabbit hole. Um, the chart that I, there are two ways that you can get your charts. You can get them as a paper chart. I used a paper chart for, um, stitching Egypt. They're very challenging charts. They're very challenging charts. Let me do it one more time. They're very challenging charts to read. I highly, highly highly recommend if you're wanting to stitch a Chatelaine design buy the electronic version it will make your life easier you can still do it from the paper chart I've got the paper chart like Egypt was stitched from a, a paper chart um, in hindsight if I had known I don't know if I knew that I could get it as a as a PDF you know this was a long time ago um, in hindsight, if I'd known, I would have gotten the electronic chart. What the electronic chart provides you that is easier than the PDF is it provides you both a color version and a black and white. If you get the paper charts, now I haven't bought a paper chart in a long time, but from the discussion I've seen in the, fa the Facebook group, um, the paper charts are only in black and white. The PDF version gives you color and black and white. So even if you prefer stitching from a black and white, you still have black and white as an option, but it gives you the color. And what that allows you to do is it gives you better clarity around um, if there's backstitching involved. It gives you better clarity if you're trying to piece the instructions to, wait a minute, is this, is this the road stitch she's talking about or the eyelet that she's talking about because on the color version you'll have the two different colors so you'll know where you're going. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that if you're looking to do a Chatelaine, get the paper chart. Or get the paper chart. Don't do that. No, no. Get the electronic chart. It will make your life easier. 
the only the only caveat I put on that is if you are someone who really really struggles with technology um, and you don't have anyone to help you with the PDF version maybe the paper version is a better option for you it is not uncommon for me to look at the chart that I've been provided and blow it up to 400%. It's a PDF file, blow it up to 400% so that I can see the symbols clearly. So if you order an electronic one, don't be surprised if you get a version where it's like, here's the chart all together. And it's like, it shows that you can print out the entire chart for the whole thing on one sheet of eight by 10, but you can't distinguish any of the symbols. It's like, <laughs> you're like there's no way I can print this chart out on an 8x10 right that doesn't make any sense so you have to blow it up a lot to actually read it and see the symbols um, but yes since I found the PDFs I have only that's not I was gonna say I've only ever purchased PDFs that's not true predominantly since I found the PDFs I've only purchased PDFs unless I have found a paper chart that's at a ridiculously economical price I was somewhere, um, they had a Chatelaine Designs chart on sale. It was $10. I got it anyway. I was like, I've already suffered through one paper chart. I know I can do it. I can handle this one. $10, I can't get a better price than that. So where do you get the charts from? So the chart, the PDF charts, um, you buy directly from the Chatelaine Designs website. I will put a link to that in the notes section below have a gander at them. They're stunning. Um, if you're looking for paper copies, um, I think your LNSs can order them in, but I'm not 100% sure on that. For sure, you can get paper copies of the chart from uh, European Crop Stitch, and I will put a link to their site below as well. I was going to say something about charts. Okay, the charts. So there is a couple of options. When she was originally designing a lot of these designs, they were mysteries. <laughs> you know how well I do with the mystery. <laughs> they were mysteries. And they came out in parts. And a lot of them, they came out in, in 12 parts. So that if you did one part per month, by the end of the year, you would have your design completely stitched. So you've when you get the designs, if some of them may be, you will get a chart where it's like, here is the ch here's all of the chart and all of the instructions as one thing, right? Because that's either how it got published or the mystery stitch along had been completed for a long enough time that she'd reformatted the chart. So it was like, here's just the chart. For example, Polar Mandala, um, the chart that I received was like the mystery version where it said, here's part one, here's part two, Here's part three, there's 12 parts. Um, so it's not just one chart, it's each of the parts. I'm okay with either version. You know, <laughs> I actually kind of like the 12, I like the 12 parts because it goes like, all I have to accomplish is this. And then I can feel successful because I'll have finished one. Who knows how long it's gonna take. But, and it will say that in the descriptions on the Chatelaine Designs website, sort of saying like, this is, you know, sort of, you'll get, the mystery class thing, right? So it will it will say that in the description is going like here, here's the chart or here's like you'll get the parts. Um, so for example, on um, and I don't know all the parts off the top of my head. You know, so <laughs> the center block is part one. There's no way I'm going to get this stitched over one in one month. Let's not kid ourselves. Anyway, if you did the two over two, this is maybe doable in one month. Part two is this, is this border around the center square plus the sort of diagonally sections of the frame around it. Part three is filling in sort of these parts in that. And then I think there's like part four, part five, part six, part seven, and then there's multiple parts on how you get all of these outer corners done. One of the other things about the charts and these, particularly the mandalas, and I see, again, I've seen discussions on these things. The earlier mandalas, like Egypt Garden, which I'm not hauling up again, right, all four sides were exactly identical. 
And there, there are people out there who are going like, there's no way I'm stitching that four times. Um, I will say I had no problems stitching all, all, all of the Egypt mandala, that the fact that all four sides are exactly identical, I had no problem stitching that. In fact, my recommendation is stitch down before you stitch up because the, it gives you the bottom part is if you're doing one where everything is exactly the same, it gives you your practice version, practice versions, and it means your top is your best version, hopefully. That's how it was with me for Egypt. I'll talk about that in just a second, but, um, you know, for specialty stitches, the, um, there are specialty stitches in all of them. Um, so if you're not comfortable with those or you're or you're somewhat comfortable, but you're sort of getting up to going, conf getting up your confidence level. Again, if you if you start at the bottom and work your way up, your best ones will be at the top. Um, as her designing progressed, you will see in her later designs that not every um, not every side was exactly the same, like polar mandala. So, you know, clearly these larger designs are different the corners remain identical. So, and again, I'm totally fine with that. I've seen pictures of this stunning, 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 very sparkly. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute as well. So again, these are challenging charts. They all have specialty stitches. A lot of them have some portion of over one. The center design of Egypt, um, that fish pond is over one. This center, again, I'm choosing to do it over one. There is an over two version, but it's not uncommon to find in um, a Chatelaine Designs a section of over one stitching. There are specialty stitches in all of them, all, or certainly all of the ones that I've seen and heard talked about. They're all, they've all got specialty stitches. So if you are new to specialty stitches, I would say do not commit yourself to a large design off the get-go. If you're interested in these, my recommendation is that you buy one of the smaller designs. And on her website, she's got a section called like low cost, low time, right? So they're smaller designs. Um, I would invest in one of those first. Even if you go, I love this, I so wanna do it. Do one of those first. I know a lady, she stitched um, uh, Convent Herbal Garden. Stunning! Lovely, lovely, lovely. But she disliked, you know, she got it done. It looked stunning, but she so much disliked working with the chart that she's like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> like, I'm done with those. The, the charts are too hard to read. So before you invest in a big one, do a small one particularly if you are not very confident in your specialty stitches. Um, now, is that what I did? No, I was very, I was reasonably confident in my ability to do specialty stitches Why I jumped right directly into Egypt Mandala. Like I say, I got it done. Specialty stitches didn't scare me. Over one didn't scare me. All of it got done, etc., etc. Thrilled, thrilled with the outcome. Thrilled because I bought more. All right. Let's talk about fabric. I'm going to put that one down. Again, because there are so many specialty stitches and over one, these are not designs that are good for Ada. So if you are an Ada stitcher, that is your jam. That is where you are most comfortable. I absolutely do not recommend that you buy your Chatelaine designs. Too much, too many specialty stitches everywhere in every direction in every form. I think doing it on Ada would just be an absolute nightmare. So if you are an Ada stitcher, I'm really sorry. The designs are lovely, but I do not recommend, you know, you can do them, but you really do need to do them on an, um, a linen or an even weave. I've got all sorts of notes on, hang on a second. Um, okay. So when you're doing it on 
you know, so between linen and even weave, I will say that my recommendation, and this is my recommendation only, is do it on an even weave. There are hundreds and hundreds of people who have stitched these designs and done them on linen and are thrilled. Thrilled, 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 thrilled. They loved it. So if you're going like, I don't really, I really don't like even weaves, do it on linen. It'll be fine. I'll, there'll be a couple of caveats coming up. The reason why I recommend an even weave is the fact that um, the, the called for Delica beads and Swarovski bicones and cubes and etc. etc. When I worked on Egypt, it was amazing. They fit perfectly. So Egypt I did on a 32 count antique white Lugana. Everything fit perfectly. Every bead was perfect. You know, so there's a large, oh man, I'm gonna have to pick it up again. Uh, let's see if I can find, hang on, let me find a section that I'm talking about and then we'll, like, okay, let's do this. So in this corner, Oh gosh, I still can't see it. Right, you've got all those royal blue beads, right? There's a lot of them in rows. It gets to be a fairly dense beading. And, you know, what I found in the discussion groups was that, um, that people on linen were struggling to get all of them in. Um, I didn't have that problem. So I could do long rows of beads, whether it's the stems of flowers or the stars in the sky or wherever it was, everything, sorry, uh, it's probably going to cut them up one more time, but anyway, anyway, I used the called for Delica beads. I used all of the called for beads for that one. And on even weave, on a 32 count solid colored even weave, everything fit perfectly. I didn't have to adjust. I didn't sort of go, man, this, I'm really struggling getting these in. I had none of that. You know, I'd read a lot in the discussion group, you know, about people struggling with things. I experienced none of that. And I believe it's because I was working on a 32 count even weave. On linen, you may have those struggles because of course the fibers are not, um, um, you know, the, the thing with linen, it's like some are thicker than others and 27 other things, you know, so I think it makes it a little more challenging, particularly depending on what's happening in the section where you're beading and how many beads are going in. So one of the solutions to that is forget 32 count, go down to 28 count. Um, it will make, yes, it's going to make your project a little bigger, but it will give you a little more breathing room. If you are wanting to do your project on a hand dyed fabric, so not a solid color Lugana, <laughs> if you're wanting to do it on a hand dyed, I absolutely unequivocally say go down to a 28 count. With the dyeing process and everything that goes with hand dyed, we all know that there is some shrinkage. Even if you're looking to do a hand dyed even weave, a hand dyed Lugana, I would still go down to 28 just to make sure that you've got that room to put the beads in. Um, okay, sorry, I've got to check all the notes. Uh, so 20 count if you're doing anything other than solid colored. There is a fabric viewer. I will put a link to the fabric viewer in the notes section down below that says you can pick chatelaine designs and put them on a variety of over dyed fabrics. Um, so you can have that option. As always with hand dyed fabrics and any fabric viewer, when you look at them on those, it's the sample that was provided to them over time dyes change. Every piece of hand dyed fabric is different. A lot of the sample, sample colorways that are provided have been dyed on linen. So again, if you're going to a Lugana, it's going to look different. Colors take differently. The intensity is different. So it will give you a, a it will give you an idea of what it might look, 
but it may not be exact. And it's not uncommon in the Facebook group to say, I saw this on the fabric viewer, I ordered it, I got my piece, it looks completely different. I can't possibly put it on this. So caveat, 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 careful, careful, careful. If you're wanting to do it on, um, if you're wanting to do it on an over dyed fabric, I would say either order your fabric from a store where you can, where they've actually got it in stock, where you can talk to them and say, this is what I'm planning on using for, do you think this will go? Hey, there are a lot of shops out there that they don't really know what's going on with Chatelaine, Chatelaine designs. They're not aware of them. They may not necessarily know everything, but they might be able to say, okay, the piece that we have in stock that we could sell you is DMC color equivalents, X, Y, and Z. And then you could decide from there. So, if you're buying a hand dye, just careful, careful, 28 count is my recommendation. There are lots of, um, there's a fa Facebook group for Chatelaine Designs and it's an, I'm part of that Facebook group. It's an incredibly helpful group. Anytime anybody has a question on anything, there are lots of people to jump in and try to help you figure it out. You know, there's people and they're going like, I really don't know what this, I can't. I don't know what the symbol is supposed to be. Can you tell me what I'm supposed to be doing here? There, and people will jump in and help. It's a fantastic group. It's a great group if you want to see what did people stitch, you know, this design on. Um, they may have finished it or they're working on it. Don't forget in every Facebook group, you can go in and search. So you could search for your design, 27 things. You can just scroll through if you're looking for eye candy. It's a fantastic group. So if you're wanting to do a Chatelaine Designs, I would say join the Facebook group. Join the Facebook group. They're incredibly helpful. Um, okay. I'm back to charts. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so if you're looking for the charts, um, certainly the PDF charts, um, Chatelaine Designs has sales on their charts periodically at least once, probably twice, maybe up to three times. It's been a while since I bought some because I went, really, you need to get a grip. You're, you're good. <laughs> um, so my recommendation is if you're interested in them, you know me, budget conscious. Well, I say I'm budget conscious. Um, if you know it's going to come on sale, wait for a sale. How do you know when the sale is going to be? Sign up for the Chatelaine Designs um, newsletter they will tell you when the sale is coming up. They will give you the code word so that you can get the discount. If you buy it during the sale and you don't use the discount word, they're not going to give you the refund because you didn't use the discount. So wait, sign up for the newsletter so you know when the sale is coming so you can get the discount code, buy it on sale. Every little bit helps. Are these the most economical of charts to get? Nope, they're expensive charts. Why are they expensive charts? I can't imagine the time and effort that it went into designing these things. They are well worth the money. These are very complex, very heavy on the detail designs. As far as I'm concerned, they're worth every penny. Um, but if you can get a sale, sales better. Um, okay. Chatelaine designs are expensive designs to stitch. There's no getting around that. The chart is expensive. The called for materials are expensive. Do you need to use all of the called for fibers? Not necessarily. So for example, um, there are a lot of designs that call for a lot of NPI silks. Okay, right there, silks, expensive. So if you're going like, oh man, like, uh, right, right there, my answer is if, if the costs, if you're trying to watch your budget, step number one, anytime it says NPI, do the DMC equivalent, full stop. Don't even second guess yourself. And again, in the Facebook group, there are lots of people who've shown their charts where they said, I didn't use any of the NPIs. I, and they're just as stunning. So don't let that concern you. The NPIs are a solid colored silk. 
So if you if you want if you're trying to be more budget conscious, step number one, if it calls for NPI, boom, use the DMC. What's happened on the Chatelaine Designs website is they generally, and, and again, I have not looked at all of them, but as a lot of the ones I've looked at, you can go directly onto the website, and even before you've bought the chart, you can download the materials list. So you can see what you're getting yourself into. You can see whether it's a where you need like hordes of threads or maybe a more reasonable amount and it will be specific and it will tell you how many you know rainbow gallery products you need and how many gloriana silks you need and dinky dyes and thread gatherer and npi and dmc and everything else you can download those, those material lists for free even before you buy the chart so you can assess for yourself whether you're what you, if it's too much for you to commit to, you can find other ones that are are just as stunning and maybe don't need as as many materials. It also lets you do the option where it's like, okay, I'm going to kit this over a period of time. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to pick on polar mandala. Who knows how long it's going to take me to stitch this over one center. This over one center is done entirely in DMC. This is entirely done in DMC, which gives you oodles of time to start working on the other fibers that you need for the rest of the design. Um, I know that I've talked about this before. Um, ECC, so European Cross Stitch, company where so that's where I have bought all of my kits from I have bought them as kits they also run sales again usually at least once a year maybe sometimes twice how do you know about the sales and get advance notice sign up for their newsletter do you need to buy all of the kit do you need to buy them from there no not necessarily but if you're looking to buy a kit i do recommend european cross stitch um, that's where i got mine from they come lovely we'll talk about that in a bit um, but they come with everything except for the dmc well that's not true you can choose what you want um, you can choose whether you just want a bead pack or a thread pack or there's option there's a drop down box on each of the of the pages for the designs as to what your options are. I usually have chosen to buy full kits. Why? One, because I bought it on sale. Two, I was paying international shipping. They're located in the US. <laughs> so ordering it bit by bit, bit by bit just means my shipping costs go up. Um, so that's where that's where I got mine. It also meant that I ordered the, the specialty fibers to, all together and all of the beads. So the Delicas, the Swarovskis, etc, etc. Now, it's been a long time since I've been buying the kits. I will say the, the kits are expensive. There's no getting around that. So I did go in and I looked for the two that I'm talking about, what the options are. So Egypt, over here on the floor because I'm not picking it up again, the thread, this, the thread pack, so the, all the the called for threads excluding DMC for Egypt. The current price of that is $194.35 US. Expensive! Expensive! Yep. The bead pack on top of that is $72.90 US. Expensive! We'll talk about that in just a second. There is also currently an option on their website where you can get all of the threads excluding the Gloriana threads. So Gloriana, it's taking forever and ever and ever to get threads out of Gloriana. Um, so they are giving you the option where you can get all of the threads excluding the Glorianas. Now that takes in Egypt, for example, there's quite a few Glorianas. So it takes your cost for the thread pack from 194 down to 104. So it's $90 less if you exclude the Glorianas. You just need to come up with the solution on your own. Now, the thread pack um, includes, there's one color, one color of Karen Water Lilies, which is a sink. Which is a sink? It's not a sink, it's a silk. Four colors of Dinky Dye Silks. Four colors of Thread Gatherer Silk and Color Silks. 
uh, six colors of Gloriana, one color of Gloriana Princess Pearl Petite, three colors of Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid. Um, so those are the specialty fibers that went into Egypt, you know. And again, silk, 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 you know that's going to get expensive. We'll talk about doing things with silk in a bit. Um, I will say Egypt, so the, the stitch, the design area for Egypt was 308 by 308, so not small. There were 3,098 beads put on that. So I did all of the stitching, and then I will say, I remember it, I finished all of the stitching, I was going, you've done so good, you finished all the stitching. Now, there's only... 3,100 beads to attach. Now again, I was working on it on a scroll frame, 27 things. I'm still, for me, the right decision was leaving all of the beading until the end. Again, in the Facebook group, there are lots of people who are chiming in about beading as they go. Uh, Teresa Little Stitcher, if you want to see, she's working on Evening in the Park Stunning. She beads as she goes. So like there's always options around things. I personally chose to do the beading at the end. It worked best for me. But I did get to the end and go, now I've got 3,100 beads to go. And again, like the bugle beads, and this is how I, my recommendation about starting from the bottom and working your way up, is I started at the top and worked my way down. And by the time I got to my four side, my bugle beads were way better. And I looked at my top and went, I can't possibly leave that. So I had to like rip all those bugles out and re-put them in because my bugle attaching skills were better by the time I got to the, by the time I did the far side, my first side looked terrible and I, so I ended up stitching five sides of bugle beads. Anyway, so that's Egypt. The polar mandala is slightly smaller. It's only 295 by 295 square. Um... I'm stitching it on a 32 count white Lugana. The thread pack for this one, the current thread pack for this is $270.30 US. Expensive. Uh, the bead pack is $85.25. The thread pack excluding the Glorianas is $171.86, 80 cents. I can't read my writing. So again, if you exclude the Glorianas, you're shaving about $100 off of your thread packs. I've got, because I'm working on Polar, I've got my project bags that holds all my stuff with me. So I'm going to do a quick little... Um, so one, part of it has to do with the fact that um, this is one of the bags. This is a bag from So Much to Love. It's a lovely bag. <laughs> Why do I have the bag? It's really because I was getting a gift for someone I know, and, you know, no bag can travel alone. So she got a bag and I got a bag. Anyway, all right. The second, the second project bag is now underneath stuff, and I'm not going to fish it out. So here... Here is the f here are the fibers for the polar mandala. It's on two rings. This is a three inch ring. This is a two inch ring. Why is it on two rings? Um, one. So these are my DMCs for the over one section. There are 53 colors of DMC to do that center square. I don't know that it's square. Anyway, to do that center part. 53 DMCs, that's the smaller ring. There's one on here that... Hmm, I'm not sure that this belongs on there. This is one of the Glorianas, Purple Night Sky. Anyway. I'm looking at the coin. I don't know that that's right, but anyway. And here are all of the other ones. Now there's other there's other DMCs on here. So in totality for Polar Mandala, there's 93 colors of DMC. 
And again, on the materials list, if I were smart, I would have pulled this out before we started this. Yes, even from the PDF, I do print some of the stuff off. Right, so for example, like it will give you, it will say, here's the color and here's how much of it you need. Right, so a crew, you need two yards or 0.21 of an eight meter skein. Right, so it will tell you what you need. If you're kidding this up on your own, um, make sure you pay attention to those quantities because sometimes you need multiple skeins of things. And in some of the, if you're, you know, certainly if you're getting, if you're waiting and, and splurging on the silks, make sure you get the full number of skeins you need at the same time so that they're from the same dye lot. Now, for polar, here's an example. Here is the materials list, right? It's three pages. So yeah, 93 colors of DMC plus, you know, I'd say a little over a page of the other stuff. Again, I got my kit from European Cross Stitch. I got it on a sale. Even when you order from European Cross Stitch, you have to, you'll have to wait for your kit to come because she's got to get all the stuff in. She doesn't keep all of this for all designs on hand. And there are still supply chain issues going on, folks. Anyway, she's usually really good about letting you, about if you're sort of saying, what's the timeline? About letting you know. But if you order and you go like, I'm expecting it in three weeks, it's not going to happen. If you want to order it and have it in three weeks, please don't order from European Cross Stitch because I don't think she can do it for you. Um, the, her packages are stunning. Now, I am a Floss Away girl anyway. So I'm just trying to find the end of my DMCs. So this part of the ring are the specialty fibers for Polar Mandala. When you get them, when you buy a kit from European Cross Stitch, they come to you already prepackaged in the Floss Away bags, which is awesome. I'm pretty sure on a ring as well. Like I said, it's been a, it's been a while. Anyway, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna flip through sort of what these specialty fibers are and we can have a little bit of a discussion about things. So I'm gonna start with the silks. You know, this is an example, this is a Karen Water Lilies, this is Pebbles. You know, this is an example of an over-dyed silk where it's gonna be hard to convert that to something else because it's got, you know, this mauve color and pink and taupe and cream. You know, this is gonna be hard to convert. Now, could you find a cotton that was over dyed and probably about half the price? Maybe. Have I looked? No, not necessarily. But if you get the materials list, you can look at some of the stuff online. You know, not everybody's close to a, to a, a physical brick and mortar shop that carries everything, nor do they carry all of the colors. But it will give you a, it will at least allow you to look at things and go, okay, that's really, that's really variegated. Maybe I need to save up for that. This is, you know, here's another Karen Water Lilies. You know, do you need the silk in this? Could you probably find something that's a green over dyed that looks similar to this? Probably. Again, I don't have one off the top of my head, but again, that's a version where I go, that could, could probably be more easily converted to an over dyed cotton. Again, half the price. Again, I don't know about this one. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Here is this, this is a Caron Impressions. So Caron Impressions is 50% wool, 50% silk. But again, that's a fairly, you know, there is some slight over dyeing. Could you replace this with just a, a dark green? Sure. A solid dark green? Sure. Uh, over dyed dark green cotton? Sure, I think either one of those would work. You know, do you need to get the Karen impressions? I would say not. No, I don't think you have to. Um, 
Here's the dinky dies. You know, so the ones where it's like multiple colors, those are the ones where I go like, those are really hard to convert. Might be possible to a hand dyed cotton, but I haven't done any of the work to do it. There's another one. Right, see that could probably be converted, no problem. Again, here's another dark green, you know. I, th I don't think you need the silk for this. Did I buy the silk? Yes, because I bought the kit. Um, again, like I think that if you wanted, you could convert that to an over-dyed uh, cotton. I feel like that's mostly solid. Again, I think there's lots of over-dyed navy, navy cottons that you could use as replacements for this. This is a dinky dyes. Anyway, you're getting the gist. Here's the Glorianas. You know what I mean? It's a dark navy. Do you need the silk to do that? I don't know that you do. Now, that's one where it's like, okay, that's going to be a little harder to convert. But again, if you get the, if you get the, if you download the materials list for one that you're considering, it's going to give you that ability to look and go, do I really need that? Do I not really need that? Everybody's budget is different. And do you have to kit this all up at once? No, nope. like I say, certainly not on polar. <laughs> it's going to take me a while to get through that first square. Anyway. Here come the Rainbow Gallery ones. Um, so this is where, this is a very sparkly chart. So there's a lot, there's a lot of them and multiple cards, right? So there's multiple cards. This is uh, Petite Treasure Braid, more Petite Treasure Braid, more Petite Treasure Braid, three cards, uh, Petite Treasure Braid, more and more and more. Silk Lame Braid, which has some sparkle. Uh, <laughs> so here's a Silk Lame Braid SP13. It's a petite Silk Lame Braid. There's only six cards, six cards of that. Multiple cards again, multiple cards again. I was gonna. Uh, I think this is the color that is the border around that uh, center square. Once I do all that over one, my next step is to do a full solid border around it in um, Silk Lame Braid. Anyway, so those are, those are, here's all of the colors for Polar Mandala. Yes, they're stunning at the end. It's not going to be everybody's jam. There are a lot of people who go like, it's too much. The patterns are too complicated. There's too many color changes. It's too finicky, too many specialty stitches. I will admire them from afar, but there's no way I'm ever going to, you know, and that's totally fine. There's not everybody has to like everybody's design. Usually everybody looks at a finished one going amazing. And lots of people go, never going to stitch that, which is totally fine. I love these designs. I love the complexity. I love how intricate they are. Does it take me forever in a day? Yep. Do I stall out sometimes? Yep. Have I bought quite a few? Yes, I have. Um, you know, and they're, they're sitting there waiting for me. Um, so those are the fibers. Because I got the kit, um, I also got all of the beads. She also sends needles. So one for, one for stitching and one for beading. This is one of these gigantic long beading needles. I'll never use that. I'll change that out for the short beading needles that I've got. But here's, um, here's all the beads. Now, where's my number? In this, in Polar Mandala, there is 2,572 beads. And sadly, <laughs> 
That's 2,572 beads, actually plus more because there's always some extras. Anyway, it'll, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be stunning at the end. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Anyway, I'm going to move all of this back over here. So that's, so that's an example of the kits that you get. Um, like I say, when I'm kitting up a Chatelaine, I've always gotten my kits directly from European Cross Stitch. One, because I waited for a sale. Two, <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine, saying, years and years and years ago, 15 years ago, there was a t period of time when the Canadian dollar was worth more than the US dollar. Take that, combine it with a sale. Every time she had a sale, I probably got it got another kit if not two I usually maxed out my budgets and went I got my kits because I went it's never going to get better than this I look at the prices today and go "Ooh, hurts a little bit and I go but you've already got a bunch you're fine you're fine you're fine you're fine all right um so I talked about the fact that um polar mandala is being worked on not necessarily because it's my absolute favorite but because that that center stitch over one is the densest over one that I've got, I was like, I need to do it when my eyes are good. So I've already pre-planned out what my next um, my next four Chatelaine designs are, and I've got them kitted up. So Polar is number one. My next one is the Amazing Earth Kaleidoscope. This picture does it no justice no justice whatsoever this is number two why again because it's all done on a dark fabric and right now the dark fabric doesn't I don't have a problem stitching on, on dark fabric I am concerned that as I age that this may turn out to be more problematic so this is my number two stitch because I want to get that done before potentially my eyes start to go number three see it's on white this is the Holland Mandala Love it, love it, love it. And there's so there are so many details in this design that you cannot pick up from the picture. So like this outside border of the center square, this little area right here, every one of those little shapes is a windmill. It's a windmill. They're stunning. When you see the close-up pictures, it's amazing amazing and the fourth one has just recently changed position it was a little further down it's now been moved up why you'll laugh because Queen Elizabeth died <laughs> I'm not starting there's no way I'm starting this for my for my funeral stitch this is her royal Tudor mandala stunning Stunning, stunning, stunning. Yeah, love it, love it. So black work borders around these outsides anyway. They're anyway, lovely, lovely, lovely. I have also put in restrictions on myself. I am only allowed to work on one Chatelaine design at a time. I'm not starting all four of these and like it's never gonna happen. I have to start one. You've I've been on floss tube for over two years. This is the first time you're seeing polar. I have no business starting multiples. So I need to get working on them. So hopefully you're going to start to see polar on a more regular basis. And I am working that into my stitching rotation so that you should be seeing polar on a more regular basis. How successful I'm going to see, stay tuned, we'll find out. If you've been watching, uh, certainly Sunshine Stitchers, and I, there's another one, I've, I, even last night I couldn't remember who it was. They're starting a Chatelaine Designs Stitch Along on October the 7th. And I'm going to show you what that is. I think I'm going to join in just so I can be part of, part of that particular Stitch Along. Sorry, I just need to find the piece of paper. There it is. Okay. It is, so this is a chart that is available from Chatelaine Designs right now that is free. You pay zero to get this particular design. 
So if you're wanting to try something small, this is your opportunity. It's zero cost for the chart. Uh, so I will put a link directly to the chart. You just add it to your cart, you check out, but you don't have to pay anything. It's all fine and dandy. I think you, even to check out, you need to set up an account, but you don't have to pay anything. This is the Marie Antoinette, the tiny Marie Antoinette gate. That's what it looks like. The design size on this chart is 45 by 38. So tiny, small, 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 small. So I've already, I've already got this, I've downloaded it, etc., etc. That's what it looks like. I'm going to tell you what the materials list is. Um, so DMC 310, no problem. There are two Karen water lilies. Uh, two Gloriana silks, four Rainbow uh, Gallery Splendor, which is also silks, uh, two Rainbow Gallery Silk Lame, and one Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors of beads. Eight in this little design. So my answer to you is download the chart, whatever you do, do not go out and buy all the specialty fibers to do this. Don't do it. Don't do it. It is too small a piece to be spending all of that time getting all of those specialty fibers to do this. I'm not planning on getting all the specialty fibers. I am planning do a stash dive. And again, for the size of this, you know, for anything that's variegated, do you really feel that you're going to get a lot of the variegation in a design size that is 45 by 38? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. You'll have the picture to sort of help you with coming up with conversions, but my wholehearted recommendation is do not, do not, do not try to find, sorry, what was the number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven specialty fibers to do this tiny little design. There might be some stuff that is, you know, certainly the splendors, those are all salt, generally it's all solid colored things. So um, there are DMC conversions for most of them, there, uh, most of them, not all of them, like there's a Gloriana that there's no conversion for, and there's a Petite Treasure Braid that there's no conversion for, but like the Petite Treasure Braid, uh, yeah, the Petite Treasure Braid is for this gold part at the top of the gate and part of the border. So if you've got a if you've got a gold sparkly anything, uh, if you've got gold crinic, gold uh, petite treasure braid, if you've got uh, light effects in your stash, um, if you don't have anything metallic in your stash, just pick a gold DMC. It's all going to be fine. Do not, do not, do not go out and try to get all the specialty things to do this tiny little stitch. What this will allow you to do, stitch from stash, it will allow you to do this tiny design and you can decide, it'll give you a, certainly a first step into the land of, of Chatelaine designs as to whether or not this has any interest for you at all. So I'm probably gonna, I'm probably gonna stitch this. We'll see how long, we'll just, you know, add one more thing into the thing. We'll see how we'll see how fast it goes again it's 45 by 38 right it's smaller than a cottage I should be able to do it right so there's that that link will be there um, when you're in the Facebook group on the beads there will there's always lots of discussion about don't get your beads from ECC there are cheaper ways to get it if you're in the US there may be cheaper ways to get it um, when I was looking at sort of, you know, 
when the discussions were coming up and they would sort of say you can get beads from x y and z and yes you could go in there and get x y and z but you know there was one instance i was looking at going like yeah great you gave me all the places where i can go and i can get it cheaper but now i'm paying for international shipping from four different stores the shipping generally was three to four times the cost of the beads themselves they went so not cheaper not cheaper at all there's always people who get really sort of like don't get them from there it's most expensive you can get it way cheaper somewhere else and the answer is not for me and all of your options on how to get it cheaper turn out to make it actually incredibly more expensive than getting it from ECC so do your own math work your own budget um I know of someone they were sort of talking about it's like you know I'm trying to save up but my my problem is that you know I you know I'm starting accumulating my money and something else comes up and I sort of want that and then I spend my money on that um again everybody's got to things if you so if you're looking for options on how to save to buy some of these things whether it's just a bead pack or a chart or whatever European cross stitch you can buy digital certificates gift certificates so you go okay here's my ten dollars i want to put that towards working kidding up a chatelaine design and i'm really afraid that if i don't do something you know it'll go into the savings pile but as soon as i get like 80 or 100 dollars, i'm going to end and spending it on something else buy yourself a ten dollar gift certificate with ecc then you can accumulate your gift certificates wait for a sale spend your gift certificates on the sale anyway that's been more than enough we are over two hours movie length and i haven't added in the video about egypt i'm going to add that video about egypt into here okay so this is where i'm going to attempt to show you a little uh, more closely sort of what my egypt mandala by chatelaine designs looks like yes i'm standing really far back to even try to get the whole thing into <laughs> into the screen it's okay we're we're going for close-ups right uh so starting at the center so the center the fish are done over one and then i chose to do the water over one as well just to be consistent um the chart shows it all of that sort of water around them being done over two I, of course, chose to make it more difficult and did the whole thing over one, sort of. And that center is, I want to say, entirely beaded. So, I, I in this instance, I, I, of course, followed my own advice that I'm giving is I started in the center and then worked my way out. So it came to those... The lovely flowers in the dark water then just trying to look which um, these are actually sort of like chicken roostery things here in the corner big debate in the so when I was doing this there was no Facebook group so I, I was uh, part of a Yahoo group big debate because um so these corners are palm trees now it looks like coconuts coming down from it the big debate was whether that when you're in egypt they don't actually have uh coconut palm trees they have fig palm trees and if you wanted to adjust them so there were options in the group about how to change it so that it looked more like a fig palm tree which of course included more beads um, and then coming out, so you know, had these detailed corners. Um, I will say that this, let's see, I'm trying to figure out where my finger is. This band here, all the way around, was the thing that I really uh, slowed me down. I didn't enjoy doing it. There was nothing complicated about it at all. Um, it just... Yeah, this went into timeout for quite a bit until I told myself I really just needed to sit down and 
and get it done. And then after that, everything else was fine. Of course, the big columns on all four sides with sailboats. I'm just looking at this going like, okay, that's maybe not my best bugling. Um, anyway, heading out to more birds. I will say that I redesigned the cat here. So the cat in the chart is, I would say, a very um, North American cat, very, you know, fat and round. Uh, so I changed my cat, um, stitched it over one uh, to look more like a bass cat, added the gold collar and um, the emerald eye. So that was a redesign by me. You know, here's all the jewel tones in the corners, which, you know, very, um, you know, predominantly all specialty stitches along with petite treasure braid and some beads. Royal blue beads in the night sky of the pyramid. See? Right there. That's, see, that's some bugling I'm happy with. Anyway. So all, yeah. Love it, love it, love it. So glad that I worked on it once I made myself do that border. <laughs> uh, I used all of the called for threads. I followed the pattern all the way except for those cats on all four sides. So the funny story about this is when I took this to the framer, I always, I always wanted it to have these sort of, you know, eight points at the top there's a little glare over there um with a royal blue preferably suede mat so i knew what i wanted when i went to go see my framer and got in there and we looked and we looked and we looked and nothing was right none of the suede mats were right none of the you know the matte finished mats were correct we looked everywhere and as i said this is a framer i've known my whole life and so I think I feel a little more comfortable in, in his framing studio than many. So, you know, he and his wife, who is an artist, she's a painter, um, started, you know, looking everywhere for anything. And I stumbled across this sample and his wife looked at it and went, that is perfect. And <laughs> my framer got this frightened look on his face and he's like where did you find that so I told him where I found it and he went I think this you know this mat has been discontinued I don't think I can get it anymore and his wife looked at him and said you will get this for her and I just I just stood back and was absolutely silent he was being told he did find it. I'm thrilled with it. It's amazing. Yeah, I really love this one. So yeah. Four identical sides. It didn't bother me um, doing the four sides. What I found interesting is that, not surprisingly, once you figured out one, you know, the other three sort of went faster because you'd figured out your path and how you were doing it. But, yeah. So there is a closer look at my Egypt garden mandala. And I'm not quite tall enough, I think, to get the whole thing into the frame. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the close-up of that. If you have any questions about Chatelaine designs, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. I'm more than happy to do that. 
if you're interested in just eye candy or you're interested in working on one but want to see what challenges people see and join the Facebook group you don't even necessarily need to post the question yourself you can just go into the Facebook group and Google the design you're looking for not Google go into the Facebook group search for the design you're looking for and see all the posts that have already been done on that you'll see examples of what people have stitched it on you'll have seen where people have struggled with the chart you'll be able to see all of that so like I say any questions put them in the comments down below let me know if you're interested in joining the tiny Marie Antoinette Gates stitch along which starts on October the 7th I think there's a hashtag for that I don't know I'll check into that I'll know more next time um, as always um, if you are in the greater Calgary area next Saturday September the 24th we are having our get-together at the Signal Hill library it's a lovely group of ladies would be more than happy to have some of you join in if you are around bring a friend we've got lots of room um, that is at the Signal Hill Library. The address is in the notes section below from 9.30 in the morning to 12.30. Uh, so looking forward to seeing a bunch of you next Saturday. Now, uh, as always, thinking of the people of the Ukraine, um, I've been looking at some of the global happenings like, man, we've got fires, we've got floods. Um, I know that I got a letter looking for some donations um, you know there are a lot of women in this world their lives are incredibly hard incredibly hard um, on on a day-to-day -day basis not just because of certain events um, anyway so I'm actually thinking about a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people these days fires floods um, yeah fires floods war violence um, all sorts of things going on so lots of people I'm thinking about these days people mourning it's been interesting watching all the people um, watch the happenings in London. Um, the number of reporters that have said, oh, thank heavens, we weren't, we weren't actually showing, we weren't having to have um, commentary while, while the coffin was going back because I cried. There was one I did say, she's like, she was crying. <laughs> she's like, well, I hate it. She's like, you're in mourning. Um, it's been interesting you know David Beckham lined up for 12 hours I somehow feel like you got to jump on that but anyway he's still lined up for 12 hours to walk by um, Queen Elizabeth so good for you David I appreciated that anyway I will be watching the funeral tomorrow working on my stitches if you're doing a funeral stitch would love to see what you're doing like I say I'm gonna to try to find that hashtag and put it in the notes below so we can post and see what everybody's working on um, as always, safety first, safety first, safety first. Don't take things for granted. Most accidents occur close to home. Safety first. So I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy. I hope you're finding some time to do some stitching. And I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. Um, where we'll catch up on my stitching. Um, as always, comments, questions, uh, suggestions for topics you'd like covered are welcome down below. Love having the conversation and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.